Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation on live hiphopdaily.tv and in this episode is sponsored by Atlantibus Clothing. Um, check out everything from our Atlantibus Signature Collection to our Drug Lord Collection and Return to Viper Collections. They're all available for purchase at atlantibusclothing.com. And also Grow Club DC, who we actually have in the building today. Uh, shout okay. out to Grow Club DC. They're doing amazing things. Everything uh, from helping people learn how to actually access and do and do amazing things with the plant, have an amazing membership program. They also have a, a whole another program that we're going to get into today that can actually help you get into the industry if you're tired of being on the streets and doing pop-ups all the time so without further ado man um i'm gonna get my man e on here in the microphone to actually talk to us about grow club dc so hey. e what's good with you boss how you doing brother man good to have you finally <laughs> on here man we was on the phone for a little while chopping up about this 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 took a few weeks of planning before we actually got you in this in the building man but i'm glad to finally have you out here good things normally do take a little bit of time though. facts facts man um but for those who don't know you or aren't familiar with grow club DC being that we are here in Atlanta um, just please introduce yourself all right so uh, yeah I'm the one of the founders of uh, Grow Club DC we're a hydroponic store in Washington DC uh, we started and established in 2014 um, we started as building custom cabinets we <laughs> build yeah literally custom grow cabinets yeah. um, because DC for the ones on who are not familiar it's it's the people who live in D.C., they don't have a lot of space. Yeah. You know, so they and they like to be discreet. So, you know, people who work for the government and stuff like that or work for a nonprofit, they don't want people to know they smoke. So we wanted to build something custom for them. It literally looked like a cabinet. Mm. You didn't know. You open it up, you can grow in there. So, yeah. So basically the way it started was, man, I just I, I literally was at home, man, just on the couch smoking. I was in my corporate job. I was working with uh, Fitbit at the time and uh, came on the news that they passed Initiative 71. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of just, bing, I was smoking. <laughs> and yeah, it just kind of just went from there, man. That's what's up. Hey, well, so before we get into Grow Club, um, before we even talk about Initiative 71 and a, couple, and a couple other things, talk to us about how you found the plant. Like, what was the first time that you experienced cannabis? Smoking cannabis? Uh, wow. Okay, okay. So the first time I smoked was probably in seventh grade. Yeah. But then I then I really started smoking when I was like 15, 16. Okay. That's really when it came on. So, you know, and during that time in the DMV area, you know, stuff was way different. You know, it was actually Chocolate City. It's not Chocolate City no more. Yeah. But it used to be really Chocolate City. So you go out to the city and you can go to certain spots and people would just come and swarm your car with bags and you just pick out and then you just roll. And that was kind of like my first, like we would do that every day. We just getting high and just getting by and you know, just just, just loving life, man. Young and young and high. You, yes. know? <laughs> you know, you touched on something, that was actually my next question because you are a native of DC. Right. Um, you've been able to see DC ch change in a lot of ways. Like you mentioned about it being Chocolate City. When I was typing that, when I was typing this question, I was thinking to myself, do we still call DC even Chocolate City? Like it's changed that much. It's not. What's it like watching the city change over the last few decades as you've been able to watch? Um. I don't want to say sad because that's not really what I feel, but it, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's okay. It's sad because the culture has been lost, mm. but it's good because violence is down in some aspects. You know, it used to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like you go anywhere and get shot up in DC. So the crime is a lot down and the money, there's more money to be made in DC. So that's good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But the culture is gone. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, and, and 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 that was the thing. You know, you would love about DC from the go go to the mumbo sauce. Uh, yeah. you like they, you, they'd have staples. You know, what yeah. I'm saying not like those staples are gone anymore, but like you mentioned, it's changing in the ways where some of those things are being either reintroduced to another group of people in a different way, or just being kind of pushed aside. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. uh, it, well, you know, it's a whole another topic, another another topic. But I would say it's partly some of our fault. You know, yeah. I would blame. You know, we. We had ownership of a lot of the properties yeah. in D.C., and then they didn't just get it stolen from them, you know. These had to be sold off. Mm. So who did that? You know, if you if your grand grandmammy and grandpappy owned a property, and then they gifted it to your great-grandkid down the line, and he lives in Cleveland or California, and he don't give a crap about that property, he just wants to sell it, and the properties are booming, 
you getting offered a million dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars, you gonna take that. Yeah, you gonna take that. You don't care about what grandpa or you don't care about all that. So yeah. that's kind of what happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, during that growth spit, oh, during the growth, we actually seen DC become um, a, a, a hot conversation when it came to cannabis after Initiative Seventy One passed. Right. Um, and that was one of the biggest changes that 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 we've seen the city undergo. When it was first proposed, did you think it was going to go through in the first place? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Um, I I thought it was going to take a little longer. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to get like uh, denied and then we're going to do it again. Yeah, because that's happened before in D.C. It wasn't the first time that somebody had pitched a proposal. Well, what's crazy is like right after they passed Initiative 71, they also passed another bill that was going to legalize cannabis lounges and they rescinded it within 24 hours. I've never seen that happen before where you pass a bill and then you take it off the board within 24 hours and they never revisited it after that. Yeah. So, yeah. And this was seventy one was huge though, because a lot of people in DC were getting locked up, you know, for you know, because it's a weird, you know, it's mixed in with federal territory within so even still, you can be smoking in certain parts of DC and it's federal. You're on federal property. Yeah, you're talking about capital shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And but there's like parks and all this mm-hmm. stuff, you know, and then you got the, you know, downtown area. You don't some people don't know where the border is, you know, start for DC and the federal. So mm-hmm. but yeah. It, it, it definitely changed the game for sure in the DC area. So, and after it started, it, it, after Initiative Seventy One um, passed, you did mention to us you was in the crib and a, and a light bulb popped in your head right. immediately, man. So, what, tell a us about light bulb. T- tell us about your feelings when that did pass and 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 how it energized you. Oh man, it. You know, I'm a I'm a risk taker by heart. I always have been. You know, um, you know, I started in the music industry, um, working at Atlantic Records, and then moving over to Sirius Satellite Radio, did that for like seven, eight years. So, and I was always jumping out, just doing crazy ventures, whatever came to my mind. So when this happened, I was kind of like, boom, this makes sense because this is the one thing that I've been doing for the longest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that this, out of all the things that I'm good at or kind of good at, you know, this is the one thing that I know I've been doing. Even when I was doing a little hustling back in high school yeah. and all that, so I knew this is what, I was good at and this is what I love. So I was like, it just made sense. Like, why not? And plus I wanted to stop buying my own shit. I wanted to create my own stuff. Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to do that. And that's what Initiative 71 gave the ability to was to grow your own plants in your own house. So what I like, you know, and that was dope because um, what I liked about DC when I was up in DC, um, the last time I was in DC was like 2016, but they had the gifting process. Like it wasn't necessarily, I can go into a store and get no weed and nothing like that, but you would actually have situations where you could have, um, I could buy a t-shirt and you would get an ounce. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, I love that system. Right. Talk to us about the gifting system for those who don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Like that was a real thing. So yeah, so gifting, what it was, was in DC you can, you can gift up to uh, two ounces. Um, so what people did who were, you know, were hustling was like, all right, so since I can gift this to you for free, you pay for said T-shirt yeah. or a baseball card or a sticker or whatever, whatever they wanted to throw in there. And then from that, then they would give you <laughs> said weed or product or whatever you, yeah. whatever you bought, whatever. So yeah, that was the gifting process. It was, you know, it's a, it was a loophole, gray a area. A big ass loophole, bro. It's a little gray area, <laughs> you know. It was once again, you know, a great. That's what initiative, you know. That's what it was a lot of gray area. Yeah, because when I was there, I know they had, um, they had a few shops, but yeah, most for the most part, people was telling me about this hustle. I thought I was, that first thing I thought was a hustle. People was telling me like, yeah, nah. What we do is like, say you want, I got eighty dollars, right? Yeah. All right, so boy, I'm gonna give you this shirt, but also with this shirt gonna come this weed. I'm like, right. Nick, how's this happening in right, real right. time? <laughs> right. Yeah. And people were getting kind of creative with their. Uh, I, I believe products it. Products that they were giving out too. I so. believe it. My the pop ups must have been lit at that moment, man. Like, man, pop ups were. Crazy. Crazy back then. Uh, you, yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of people made a lot of money back then in those pop-ups for sure. Yeah. So, Grow Club DC. Um, Grow Club DC was formed during this time, or out, of, out, of, out of this time. Right. Well, um, talk at to, the beginning of the time. Talk to us about how Grow Club DC formally came to life um, and just became what it is today with the memberships and in the hydroponics. Okay. So I was mobile, had my business mobily. So I had Grow Techs. I had deliveries I needed to make. I had uh, 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 marketing females. I was doing everything remotely. Mm. So it got very crazy, you know, cause I had girls going out selling grow kits at festivals and stuff. They was getting sold out 
and it took forever to build these cabinets. I mean, you know, yeah, it, wasn't, I believe- <laughs> it wasn't like a quick process, and it's not like I had a whole bunch of you know jabronis in the back building a whole bunch of cabinets. I only had like two people, so yeah, I got it. Just got kind of just crazy doing it remotely. So um, God kind of intervened, and serendipitously, something happened where a location opened up and a very pristine loca- area of Washington D.C. And uh, shout out to the mayor, uh, Muriel. She had passed where the vape, vaping became part of the cigarette tobacco tax. Mm. And then the tobacco tax in D.C. is like 50, 60 percent. It's crazy. There's like no vape shops in D.C. It's not because it's not worth it. I'm so shop people still smoke tobacco. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> that's the shop that I'm in now used to be a vape shop. OK. So they basically wasn't making no money. So they were like, yo, we need to get out of this. So it just kind of just like happened right there and then boom, it just formed. That's dope, man. Yeah, you fell into the right place at the right time, basically. For sure. So the shop, what does the shop offer to people? I know you mentioned the the the, the grows. Do you still do the cabinets? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, we've upgraded, man. Yeah, the cabinets, uh, it, 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 you know, they're still good for hot. It's like it was. It was like a uh, like a like a tourist. Kind Bro, of. you gotta make that a custom thing. Like like Bradley Beal or somebody hit you up and say, "Yo, Man. I need a cabinet." Yo, I, the craziest cabinet I ever did. Somebody paid like five thousand dollars for it. They wanted like custom painting on it. Yeah. So I had to get an artist paint the whole thing. It was yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, we don't do those anymore. It's, it's more efficient to grow in tents. <laughs> That's what's up. And you have a membership. Um, 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 you have a membership that goes yeah. along with Grow Club. Like, yeah. How does somebody become a member and what does the membership entail? Yeah, so Grow Club DC is an experience, bro. Like, it's like, we. that's what we strive to be. You know, we've had many crazy experiences in my shop. You know, I always said, you know, from the beginning, I could have made this into a reality show, but I don't think I would have been around, you know, right now if yeah. it would have been, but it would have been crazy. Um, but yeah, we, we offer hydroponics. We offer... Uh, grow techs to come set it up in your house um, so we have the whole full spectrum of hydroponic store and then after that the other part of my store is a, is a I have a lounge I have a lounge area uh, a bud tender stuff of that nature uh, TVs all that stuff in the back and then we got a media room Word. also in the back as well well we got peep that shit man yeah man we've yeah. had some flavor flaves been there man we've had some we crazy people. Bernie Sanders, people when he was running for president came through. Stop. Not him, but his, his, his people. <laughs> his people's came through. His people's his team came through. What was it like with Flay pulled though? Like what was, what was Flay there oh, for? Man, I mean I know he was there for, but <laughs> that guy's amazing, bro. Shout out to Flavor Flav, man. That guy is exactly what you think he is. <laughs> exactly like you see him on TV. Like that's how he is. Like it's no no cap. Like that's how he is. Like he literally we sat there. He chilled with us for like four hours. We smoked. He had the big clock on. It was, yeah, dude was cr- crazy. As soon as he walked out my store, everybody like cars, flavor, flavor. Like he's he just like, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a showstopper. That dude, was a, he's, he's cool. That's what's up. Have you seen your membership grow um, since COVID? Like I know a lot of people had to be shut down and actually couldn't do a whole lot, but have you seen actually more activity start since the pandemic? So we really didn't in, increase our membership. So. Mm-hmm. I've been around, we've been around so long that we kind of just got cool with where our memberships where you were, at? and we kind of just capped it off, and then sometimes we'll open it up from time to time, but, you know, we value our members, and we want that experience to still be great, and when you start allowing everybody in, sometimes it messes up the whole experience, because certain people mm-hmm. like to be stupid and mess things up. So I've learned, I've had to knock my head up against the wall a few times with this over the many years. So, yeah. But uh, no, what happened during COVID, uh, we got shut down for like three months, four months, something like that. And uh, yeah, that was rough. Damn, how did y'all survive through it? Mm-hmm. You know, we just, just kept grinding, bro. Luckily, you know, fortunately for us, we were in a better position than a lot of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We weren't just starting our business. A lot of people who just started were getting crushed. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I've ran into so many people who were trying to start a business last year, had the money up, got the location and all that, then boom, you know what I mean? Automatically in debt. Nah, nah, for sure. That we had our neighbor that happened to them. He, they own a bar and that happened to them. And uh, they're still, they're still trucking though. Yeah. So we didn't get no PPP loan or none of that stuff. 
we just kept it grinding, bro. So we, well, we in the same boat. I ain't got no PPP. I still ain't got a stimulus. Like I'm three stimuluses short <laughs> of the, of, for the, this moment. I ain't got one of them yet. I knew what they wanted you to do to get the loan. I was like. Oh, they need to be all in your book. Yeah, yeah they, like they, they trying to be all, and you already all in my stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, nah, I'm good. I'm good. It was a little, yeah, nah. So, what I want to talk about tonight is the industry passport program. Right, right, uh, right, bro. You when you explained to me the the program over the phone, I, I I knew I'd heard of it, but when I heard of it, it was people doing it for other reasons. You know what I mean? Like I've I've heard of the process before. Right. But your process was slightly different, and it helps people in a different way. Um, explain to us what the industry passport program is that Grow that Grow Club DC puts out. Okay, so the industry passport is basically me not hoarding my networks. Okay, I think a lot of people do that, and I'm not saying give it away, give your networks away for free, but what I'm saying is I'm not hoarding. You know, I wanna, I wanna. Let's, let's all grow, you know what I'm saying? Let's all let's all put each other on and help each other out and brand together. Um, so basically what it is is it's it's you being able to create your own strand. Mm -hmm. So you you smoke every day just like me and, and you're like, damn, I wanna, you know, I want my own strand, you know, I want my own bag. I want my own my own personal custom product that I can put out there and put my name behind. So I'm basically allowing people to create their own strand. I'll help them to create their own strand. How, how I will do that is we'll, we'll go out, we'll do some strand tasting, we'll check out some genetics, whatever genetics you feel right with, and then we'll start growing it in legal situations, um, legal farms. And from those legal farms, you'll have uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 you will be able to then get it onto the dispensaries. So it's all legal situations. So that's a lot of the a lot of the other programs that are out right now is basically like telling people we can get you your own custom strand, and that's great. You will get some fire. I I, I know the same people out there that are dealing with, but it's still black market. Mm -hmm. So and that, that you know that's cool because you get the branding behind whoever you're under, and that's going to push you as well as them. But I'm trying to get you. We can do that and go legal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really what it's about. It's about sleeping in bed. Waking up, looking at your computer and seeing that, oh, here over in California or over here in Michigan or over here in Oklahoma, you know, or over in Virginia, I got such amount of my, you know, eighth sold or this is how many ounces I got sold for the month or this is how many pounds I'm, they're, they're, they're grabbing from me. You know what I'm saying? That way, then the more that you're on the shelves in different locations, then when it goes completely federally legal. You already got stamp in Yeah, there, like, you already like in there. Then you can then go promote it to other said Florida or wherever the fuck. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's what it's about. Think about the future. It's going federally legal. That's yeah. happening. Like, it's, 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 it's going to happen. Yeah. I remember when I first, when we first discussed coming on the show, and I remember first putting it on Instagram that, hey, we're going to have these people come through. They're going to talk about this industry passport. Man, that shit went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, our, like our comments went crazy. Uh, everybody was trying, to, was trying to figure out how they can get involved with that. And I, when I was reading it over, I thought to myself, again, it's fairly simple. You know what I mean? It's not like you haven't heard about this before. It's just a different way of doing something. Exactly. Yeah. It's a different, it's a legal way yeah. of going about it. Um, because I'll tell you, anybody who's gone out to those, these West Coast locations and so forth, and you deal with these legal individuals in Humboldt and LA and, and in the Bay, they'll tell you like, you know, they'll, they'll mess with you, but do you got a legal, do you have a legal license? Where's, or do are you, are you, are you under somebody who has a legal? Cause then they can ship you stuff. I can't ship you nothing. Cause they're too scared of losing their situation. Mm -hmm. Cause California is cracked down on that. Yeah. So they like, if. I'm not gonna lose my license for your situation. Like, like, dude, I'm making too much money giving it to the dispensaries. Like, they don't, they're not tripping about us for real. Yeah. What's the reception been like since you have rolled it out and let people know that this is something that's that's being offered now? Well, we've gotten a lot of buzz for sure. Um, so everybody should definitely jump on it if they if they're interested. It's not something that, like I said, I'm not giving my network away for free. This is not something that's is not this is not for the the, the 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 small time connoisseur yeah. you know this is for somebody who's really serious who's really about it and and can go out there and do it so yeah we've been we, we got a couple things coming up and some is this i just i don't like i said i don't like to talk things up before they really get cemented but you. there's some really 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 big things 
possibly going down. That's what's up. Yo, it's, it, I, I love the idea. Like I said, when you first told me, I was like, yo, I love this. You know what I mean? I feel like it's definitely something that's, that's needed for the people I know. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know tons of people who want to get involved. I know tons of people who feel like they should be in that level. But I'm like, you got to figure out a, di- a better way. to. You got to figure out a way to do it. You know right. what I mean? And there's definitely loopholes like the one you're creating right now that would help you get to that spot. Right. And a, and a lot of these, you know, the the... The, like I said, I'm just utilizing the fact that I've been doing this back and forth for a long time. I've met a lot of people, so I'm like, they're cool with it, and I'm like, why not? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Why not? The other people are doing it, why not? You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. And I'm already, like I said, started off with our with our brand, Trap Sauce OG, um, with Sosa Man. Uh, shout out to Sosa Man. Um, we, we got that going. So that's gonna be on the on the dispensary shelves pretty soon. Um, I didn't know if we was able to talk about uh, Trap Sauce. No, we can we 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 can briefly okay. briefly briefly talk about it. Like I said, because that's, that's that, how I first caught in kind of contact with you. They reached out to me about yo, you know, Sauce Walk about to drop a strain, and, and this dude up here in D.C. working on it. And I was like, word. Tell well, me Sa- about well, it. Sauce, I don't know what Sauce got going on, but yeah. Sosa. I mean, my, yeah, Sosa. My yeah, no, Sosa. Sosa had Trap Sauce OG out um, before me and him uh, clicked up and brought up. So, but what I'm bringing to the table with Trap Sauce with Grow Club is that. We're gonna get it into a legal situation, and I told him I'm killing it on the East Coast with Trap Sauce OG. Everybody's loving it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just a, a, another arm to help build that brand, and 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 like I said, he's a solid guy, and you know, like I said, just building my resume to get him getting on dispensary shelves. That's what it's about. You know, everybody can see what Cookies is doing. And, yeah. You know what 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 Canatique is doing and and all these different brands out there. So, yeah, you know, Brian, I think it's a dope lane, man. And um, shout out to shout, shout out to um, um sauce. What is it? Um, trap so, sauce. Trap, trap sauce. OG, OG, man. Yeah, I remember when I first heard about it. I was like, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? They definitely smoke enough. You know what I'm saying? That they, that they should nah, have their own man. line. Yeah, yeah. We did a dope party. Sosa came out when we did the introduction to trap sauce. Mm-hmm. Um, back in October, he came out during COVID. We had a COVID party. <laughs> it was kind of, it was, it was, it was kind of lame. It was lame but cool. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we had to turn away so many people because we couldn't. They said we couldn't have over 70 people, so that kind of sucked. But yeah, you and are you working with any other artists or have any other artists like that have reached out to you as far as trying to brand out their product, their own line? No, I'm not right now. I'm just really just focused on on Grow Club and and our different brands that we about to come out with and our, my, my lane with Sosa right now. Not to say that I'm not open to that, yeah. that I'm kind of talking to people, but nah, nothing's official right now. So what brand, you you working on on specific strains that's gonna be for Grow Club as well? Right. What are you working on right now on that? Uh, I got some, I got some, like I said, we got some real, real frosty stuff coming. I'm real looking. frosty stuff coming. I want to give out too much right now, but we got some real frosty stuff coming. I'll just put it out there. But, <laughs> well, shout! I'm glad all this is happening. I'm glad all this is happening in DC, um, and, and, it's, and it's a good look for this. For the for the, I was about to say city, but it could be a state soon. Like how, how you DC being well, a it's state. The DMV. Is, it's the DMV. It's the DMV. It's the DMV. DC, Maryland, and Virginia. You know, so uh, DC's. It's a. It's the three. You're literally separated by bridges, so I can be in literally three states within. 15 minutes and all three and all three of them are open to what y'all doing right now especially virginia virginia's, oh, man, the yeah, virginia's going rap yeah virginia the newest one that would have never and if you from that area you know that's virginia's I, like a no 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 fly zone i was shocked so when virginia went wreck it was the first one because maryland's not wreck dc's not wreck feels like it's wreck yeah it feels not like wreck. It. yeah virginia is going wreck so that's going to change the game. Yeah. And Virginia, you know, I mean, that's where tobacco's grown. They natural farmers from there. Facts, man. Facts, man. D.C., but I was going to speak about D.C. possibly becoming a state because there's actually rumblings around. There have been rumblings for a while about D.C. becoming a state, but it's actually feeling like it's about it's taking more of a life than before. Like, do you feel like we already seen Initiative 71 happen? Do you feel like you're going to wake up one day and D.C. is becoming a state? Nope. <laughs> Feds ain't letting that go. <laughs> ain't not. If you see it's uh on the cop cars, I don't know if they still got them. I gotta I don't try not to look at those mugs. But back in the day the D C cop cars used to say taxation without representation on on the on the cop cars, so that's tells you what it is. <laughs> so they ain't letting that because, go. Because it makes too much money. 
You see what I'm saying? It makes for its it, – it, I don't see it happen. I mean, it could. I don't know. You know, anything's possible nowadays. True. I think if, it, if any reason it doesn't happen, voting issues. You know what I mean? What you don't want to do is, is, is especially after what you just saw the last last year, what, what, what they're not trying to do is introduce another group that we have to honestly, honestly count and honestly, honestly court and do all that shit. Like, they don't want to have to start that again. And really, that's why D.C. didn't go fully wreck is because of the feds. You know what I'm saying? Because it's federally under – they're, they're DC's they're what? under, so it would be a conflict of interest. Like, how can you say if if it's federally run and then you make it wreck and it's under a federally run place, then technically all the U.S. then has to be legal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was a conflict of interest. Yeah, man, D.C.'s an interesting place, bro. <laughs> D.C.'s a very interesting place, brother. <laughs> it's like you, you can go, like, I remember, uh, I don't I don't know if you went down when you did go down there in 2016. Did you go down to the White House? Yeah. And did you see, did you go to the Trump Hotel as well? I didn't. Where I went to, matter of fact, I didn't even go to the White House. My bad. I take that back. I went to the um, um, National Monument. I was out there by that. Okay. I missed the White House. I knew it wasn't okay. that far from the hotel I was at, yeah. but I just didn't feel like making the walk. Yeah, but it was wild. Like, you know, Trump Hotel was like literally two blocks from the White House. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, he's got a hotel like literally like two blocks from. Bro, damn White House, bro. I, I remember when they when they was protesting out there uh, over over the weed out in front of the White House, lighting up joints and shit like that, man. Yeah, DC's man. a different place, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, those guys, those guys were. There was a lot of martyrs <laughs> in the early early days. A couple martyrs who jumped out there, who really really jumped out there. They all got a, got arrested <laughs> for the culture, but <laughs> they. Yeah, I remember that. Was, I know a couple of those guys who was out there. Yeah. Well, luckily we got you, man. You out here really spreading the spreading the good gospel of the bud, and you're definitely trying to help young entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs get themselves situated yeah, properly. Yeah, man. Because I mean, think think bigger, man. Like you can build yourself up to the point where you create your own brand where it goes so big that then you start, then you have minority ownership into a farm. A farm opportunity opens up because when it goes federally, a lot of opportunity is going to open up. Your cousin or something who lives down south got some property or something. Oh, boom, now you in for a license. Mm. You got your brand already going. Oh, you got your license for cultivation and dispensary. Oh, now you growing and you can sell to yourself. Now you can take it even further. Then you can create a you can create yourself a stock. Make yourself into a you know, a publicly traded company. Go have an IPO under your cannabis company. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can you can take it if you just believe you have the money behind it, believe and have the team. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think it's a dope idea. And, I, and again, that's why I supported it. That's why I was like, let me, whatever I can do, however we can work it out. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. I think it's dope. Sure, Bro, sure. Um, for somebody who do want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more about the, um, the program or if they're really ready to get started and jump on that, like how can they get in touch with you? Uh, just hit me up on IG, man. Grow Club DC. Hit me up. Hit me on the DM. Shout out to Grow Club, man. I saw somebody got married there recently. Engaged. I told you, man. We create experiences, bro. (laughs) That was actually uh, some folk from Virginia Beach. Um, They came. They were. They. They actually. It was wild that you brought up 2016 because they. I don't know if it was 16 or 17, but they had came down to DC as they first DC cannabis experience, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody heard about, everybody all over comes to D.C. for the cannabis, right? Especially in the early days. And they came and they ran into my shop. Somehow they were walking and fell upon it. And they said they kind of fell in love at my shop. <laughs> this is what he said. That's your love story, bro. It's yeah. A, a D.C. love story. So I, I, come in, I come into the <laughs> shop one day and they're over here lounging, smiling, geeking. I don't know what's going on. And they tell me that, yeah, dude dropped to the knee. He, he, he dropped, took a knee, and proposed to Shorty, and, and she, she was very excited. Bro, that's what's up, man. Flavor Flav done been there. Y'all done got engagements happening. We, we helping people get their own brand stamp. Man, yeah, we've had a lot of experiences at Grow Club DC. Salute, man. We got to come up there and come check that out sooner, sooner than later, bro. Definitely, so, bro. So I appreciate you coming out. Again, letting people know how they can follow y'all on social media, how they can Grow Club they DC can... on IG. And it's well, you already capped the membership, so there's no more membership. So y'all just gotta wait around for that. Well, you know, just hit me up.
<laughs> Solid, no bro. promises. Just hear me out. E, I appreciate you coming through tonight, man. Good love. love. No, it's been you, all man. love, bro. And that's Cash Color Campus High Level of Conversation. Please support Grow Club DC and everything dope that they do. And follow them on social media at Grow Club DC on Instagram. And again, their industry passport program is going up. Make sure that you tap in with them, see what you tap can in. do, and see if you can Be finally serious. get yourself, you know, involved in this industry. And that's Cash Color Campus, a high level of conversation.